All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, sand this thing a little bit and then stain it. Uh, and I'm gonna be wearing this mask, not because of COVID, but more so because of like the insane amount of pollen that's out here right now. So here's the uh, counter, all taken out of the van. I gotta say, cutting this uh, little circle out here was was pretty scary. It was almost too large. It works, but it was it was close. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. <coughs> oh gosh. And this little pullout thing, I was crawling up underneath it trying to screw it together, and oh, goodness, see, it still doesn't work quite right. <laughs> but it, it it seems to be working. They were cheaper slides. Um, and I would have gotten higher quality ones, but that's all they had in the size I needed, so. Anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding this thing. And I'm gonna stain the top part, like where the counter is. And then I'm gonna paint the legs and such the same color uh, as the bed over here, so that it all kind of matches and such. All right, I gotta say, I, I love the way this looks. Oh my gosh. It was funny, when I was building it, I was thinking, this was a cheaper plywood than this one, which I bought a while ago and just kind of had a scrap. And, uh, you know, I was looking at it before it had the um, stain on it, and I was thinking to myself, oh, this is gonna be, you know, this, this, looks, this plywood looks really bad, and this wood has this, like, really smooth um, surface to it. But now after I've stained it, all the grains and grooves and stuff that were in this one, it looks so much cooler than the higher quality plywood. So I'm really happy with this. It's got a lot of, a lot of character to it, I suppose. Anyways, I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and then um, go ahead and paint the legs that kind of whitish, grayish blue color. Um, I think that'll be a nice contrast with this darker stain too. I'm pretty excited. This is, this is gonna make it look, look snazzy inside the camper. So the um, the last video I just I posted, I already had a few comments from Stacy and Jean. Um, they were they were asking about some of the dimensions, but also some video of me building this and such. Because I know usually I show little time lapses of everything I do. I'm gonna go ahead and show some of that now, what it looked like building this, and then give some of the dimensions and such. Um, so if you see, you'll notice. Let me adjust the camera. <laughs> First off, you should cut this with one piece of wood instead of two, like I did. Not, that wasn't the best idea in the world. But anyways, here are the dimensions. Originally, the um, plank was right at 29 inches in length. I had to cut this side in a little bit because when the door, there's like a big handle area where the door is on the Dodge Grand Caravan and the, the town and country that I have. So the door kind of comes in like this and clicks in. So I had to shave in a little bit to compensate for that. So on this end, it goes down to 27 inches. So 27 inches to 29 inches. And from that line to that line, it's like, what was it, like 12 and a half, 13 feet deep. <laughs> inches, 12 and a half, 13 inches deep that you're gonna wanna cut that angle. And that can be kind of fudged. That's not like exact measurements. I have a little bit of extra space. This back panel here, um, 15 inches deep and this one also has to taper to match the shape of the door so it goes from 9 inches down to 8 inches and then I just kind of cut some of the edges and rounded them off a little bit so that I don't um, hit it or anything coming in and out of the, the van as for this um, circular area where I cut out for the bowl um, that's really going to depend on the bowl you get I just picked up one for like 5 bucks or something over at Walmart um, I mean, currently the diameter is about eight and a half inches or so. And I had to work around, because I, I think a better way to do this too, and let me move the camera real quick, be instead of using these legs like I did, maybe just using solid pieces of um, plywood, like on the back, and I don't know. I, I feel like it could be designed a little bit better. I'm not obviously a carpenter, <laughs> so. <laughs> Eh, it is what it is, but I put one leg here and then one leg here and so they're, they're kind of staggered because so is this 
um, which I didn't think about needing a cross support, but it worked out that I was able to screw another stud into this one, and then I was able to plate support it over there. I didn't plan this, this just happened to work out, thank heavens. Um, and then I'll show you what's underneath as far as support goes. Up and under here, I have it running all the way along the back, and then these are screwed in like on the sides just for some extra support. And then, because I have such thin plywood that I've been using for the floor and the bed and now the counter, it warps a little, and I was already noticing this one was warping. So you could probably get away with not three studs lined up like this, like I did, but I mostly did it to keep my um, main plywood board nice and straight. Although, I don't know if that's going to make a difference. Um, for the rails that slide in and out, I put a little extension here and kind of cut it at an angle so I could screw them in. And then on this side, I dropped another little piece of wood, just somewhere I had somewhere for it to sit. And I just screwed it in through the top. I'm sure there's a prettier way to do this than screwing into the top of the um, counter, but, you know, that's what we went with. Um, like I mentioned, this should be one board instead of two, but what I did to compensate for that is I have a little plate down here that's holding it in and then I also use an L bracket to kind of help attach it onto this stud and then back here I because of one single standalone leg isn't very sturdy I used another little L bracket to kind of help support it and then of course screwed it into the top there I also messed up the stain I don't think I'm gonna fix it cuz I'm feeling a little lazy but anyways that's how that worked and then um man let me tell you putting this thing together was a pain in the butt because I'm kind of like make like fudging it to make it work <laughs> really I needed a more expensive one like I mentioned or but I just couldn't find one um, or they at least they didn't have one at Home Depot so I would just splurge on your um <laughs> sliding out little whatever you call these things drawer things because uh this is pretty terrible to be honest but It'll work, I think, for what I'm doing. Uh, also, to hold these together, I just screwed in the plates. And in terms of figuring out where this was supposed to be, that was just trial and error. I don't have specific measurements for you there. I was really just kind of winging this one until it until it actually worked out. But anyways, there you go. That's kind of the dimensions and design of this thing. I hope some of you find that helpful in, in some way or another. Again, usually I, I try to talk through everything as I do it, but with the way it was like, I was kind of, like I had cut a few of the studs and I'd gathered some of the materials and like, it, I did a bunch of little things over the course of the entire past week before I, you know, put this thing together um, yesterday. So it was kind of a, there wasn't really like a coherent way to put together the video so that it looked good or, I don't know. Anyways, that's that's the dimensions of it. I should probably also mention the height of the legs, shouldn't I? That would be helpful. <laughs> They're 22 inches. A friend came over and uh, she and I were like trying to figure out what exactly the right height would be for the table and such. And we ended up deciding 22 inches for the legs. Um, and then this is about a half inch, a little less than a half inch table. So really it comes out to the height of the table being 22 and a half inches. Um, there's a couple other people that have they use that same bed. Of course, Nick has a counter that's very similar to this. This is really, I really got the idea from his counter. Um, and then there's a Vantastic too. Um, he and I have been talking some on here and he has a counter too. I'm not sure what his measurements are, but um, you know, there, there may be some other ideas that would be better or things like that. But that's, that's the height that I ended up going with. It seemed pretty comfortable for me. Oh, one last thing. <laughs> um, before I made the actual uh, cut out for the for the counter, I did use a cardboard template and such, which I, I may have shown some b-roll of that already, but um, that helped me just kind of figure out the space. Alright, so this is a little bit of a jump in time. 
I've gotten a lot done. And I'll, I'll show you, show you what's going on. First off, check this out. This is pretty cool. So I, uh, I finally got a little light. So now our rig is all kinds of set up here, and that'll work with the GoPro I got, or or the um, you know the Panasonic camera I have. But anyways, cool little little vlogging video update. So now we're set in low light, like when I have the reflectance up, or if we're doing like some night photography, all kinds of fun stuff. But anyways, here's the here's the van. Here's what it's looking like. As you can see, I got a I got electricity in here. I've got these pretty little fairy lights. I was just gonna put LED strip lightings and a friend suggested these. It was a good suggestion. This is much more homey feeling. Uh, I got a fan in here so I can um, keep myself from dying of heat, exhaustion. I put it here so that I can pull air in from the cracked windows at night. Um, and I can also turn it and face it out like this. So if I'm cooking here, uh, it'll try to blow some of the moisture and water vapor out. I'll probably put some sort of like plastic or metal or something up here too to try and uh, try and keep like stuff from splattering up on the ceiling or condensation building up. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge later. The table is all stained. It has a polyurethane coat on it now. Um, the only thing I haven't finished is I haven't finished the whole sink situation and uh, the bed still needs to be finished but the bed has been cut. So here's the bed and um, flipped and all like usual and set up like so um, and it fits just about perfectly. It actually expanded a little bit overnight just I guess with the humidity out in the van so but but once it's upholstered it, I'm gonna upholster it really tightly to try and firm it up a little bit so it'll it should fit just fine. I'm gonna be honest cutting it was a little bit tricky um, but Got it done. Also did lots of tests with the, the jackery and all. Um, I finally built this little thing here, which was a little tricky. I definitely had to use some templates and stuff to, to make that work and a lot of brainstorming and trial and error, but finally got that put together. I just need to paint it now and should be good to go. I did plug my computer up to the jackery. It was pulling about 19, 20 watts when it was just kind of idling, I suppose and when it was actually doing some intensive things like color grading or rendering a video, it was pulling about 40 watts. Currently right now, the lights only pull about one watt and the fan over here, it only pulls about one watt when it's on low and three when it's on high, so not, not too much power consumption. If I'm charging my phone, it pulls about nine watts or so. Um, so it's not, not that bad, it's doing a pretty good job. For my cables, I just ran, I had to run a USB extension for the USB fan, um, and then I just have a extension cable here for my other stuff. I ran it down here, and I'm just running it along the side. I'm actually going to take the bed out and unscrew the floor again. There's a little bit of a gap here, and it's actually, there's space underneath this area, so I can run my cables over here, and then out right there. And so I can run the USB fan cable up and down the side, and I'll just leave this cable right here so that I can plug a couple things up, like a computer and some other charging things. Also, another update, I got a cooler. So, that's been holding ice for a little while now, doing a pretty good job. I'm uh, pretty happy with it. It's only 20 quarts, so it's not gonna be a whole lot, because there'll be more ice than that in it, obviously. But, um, got a cooler. A few other things for the water, I put a little front check on it here to hold it in place, and I'll screw some rings in so that I can bungee it down and keep that steady uh, and I'll do the same thing I'll when I have my gray water tank here I'll bungee it under there and these black curtains I have some leftover fabric so I'm just gonna curtain off this area so that we don't see all the water and all that jazz and then finally um, for the windows I tried doing suction cups that was a terrible idea um, what I ended up going with was velcro I figured I could just clean off the adhesive if I ever needed to take this off for whatever reason um, but now I just have velcro on the inside so it just holds up that way um, and, you know this velcro is really heavy duty so it does a good job I also did the same for the back reflectance um, I stuck some velcro on that to help keep it held up the ones on the side they don't really need any help they, they seem to hold themselves in just fine and as for charging the Jackery um, you, you plug it in here to charge or whatever and I'm just gonna plug it into this little cigarette 
charger lighter thing right here and it should be should be good to go i could even plug it into the wall outlet when i'm driving I might charge it a little quicker and use the inverter that's built into the the van i haven't decided yet which one i'm going to do but anyways have some options which is actually why i put it over here so that i would be able to plug it in i know i mentioned in the past i was going to bring a bike with me um and i still think i could fit it here but honestly i i don't think i'm going to do that anymore I don't know, I'm going out here to do photography and I'm not carrying like the most expensive cameras in the world or anything with me, but still riding around on a bike with cameras strapped onto my back is kind of a stressful thought to me. So I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna leave the bike thing here for now. Maybe in the future we'll do some biking stuff, but for this first trip, um, I think I'm just gonna be doing hikes and such, taking it a little slower, getting pictures and all that jazz. Anyway, so that's the, um, that's the update in the van. I did actually sleep on the mattress, not in the van. Um, it was in my house before I cut it and made the final decision to use it. It was pretty comfortable. It was a little, you know, I only got a three inch mattress. Um, and it's a little softer than I was really comfortable with, to be honest. Um, so that's why I mentioned I wanna do a tight upholster on it to try to firm it up. Someone mentioned that in the comments. It seems like a good idea. I'm gonna get this thing upholstered, get a couple things painted, finished up. The like last big thing I have to do is the plumbing for that sink and then, you know, getting this bed finally finished. And then, um, and it's just packing. We're getting ready. So I have about a week and, uh, we'll be heading out on April 12th. And for those of you watching today when this video is going up, happy Easter to all of you. Um, again, I appreciate everyone that's been hanging out and watching these videos and all that jazz. It's been, it's been a lot of fun and I'm, I'm looking forward to sharing videos and talking to people in the comments on the trip and stuff it'll be it'll be it'll be neat